everyone, Joe, Cheeky, my fellow marketers, and to this year's Market Masters Awardees, congratulations once again. If si Miss Anna was hail to the queen, ako naman ang king. <laughs> so, my name is Gretchen King from Nutri-Asia, and I'm honored to introduce to you the King's Master, so Miss Angie Flaminiano. It is with great pleasure and pressure to introduce to you our president, COO, and now marketing master, Knox. <laughs> president na, master pa, o di ba? Iba yung dating ng master eh. But seriously, what a daunting task to introduce Angie. Not just because of the big titles, but most challenging is how impossible it is to squeeze into a few minutes the lessons, the learnings, the impact and values that Angie has instilled. In fact, 10 years worth. Yes, Nutri-Asia is my longest commitment to date. And a big part of that commitment is because of you, Angie. Master President Angie. <laughs> you know they say people don't leave companies and that they leave their bosses. But really, I, I would like to think and would like to say that they can also stay because of them too. When I started out in the company, no joke, yung first week, people kept on telling me on how I reminded them of Angie. At that time, I didn't meet her yet, and I kept thinking to myself, siguro Chinese to. <laughs> so for the Filipino Chinese people out here, you know what I mean. The following week, I was presenting to her in an innovations meeting. And Chinese nga! <laughs> but I didn't think that I looked like her, although I remember thinking that I really wanted to be like her. So you know, in Nuchi Asia, our organization is pretty lean. So even as a young brand manager back then, I had a lot of exposure with Angie. Double-edged sword, I know. On the one hand, napaka-career limiting, di ba? But on the other hand, how lucky I was. Imagine learning from the president herself. At the same time, I felt very lucky that she spoke marketing. And I was hungry for every interaction. And it's really in those little interactions that built up and taught me to be who I am today. So thank you, Angie. Thank you for turning presentations into reflections. It taught me the skill of critical thinking for listening to every person and sharing, no matter how small, it taught me respect. For minding and calling out even the smallest spelling errors, <laughs> spacing alignments and grammar mistakes, it taught me to be excellent. And thank you for pushing every project, challenging every timing, it taught me to be innovative and resourceful for allowing me to be independent and entertaining even the wildest of ideas. It instilled bravery in me. Thank you for listening and taking the time to teach. It taught me humility and confidence. And thank you for instilling in me a legacy-driven mindset. It taught me to work and to live with purpose. But most of all, thank you for believing in me. It nourished me and um, made me a master too. It is in these small interactions that I learned that excellence is every day. We spend five days a, work, uh, a week at work, sometimes more. And even if I was not with Angie every day, I found myself continuing to learn from her through others. Others who also carried out her impact, her values and beliefs. After all, isn't that a legacy in itself? Looking back, perhaps now they were right. I do look like you, in the sense that maybe I emanate your legacy too. Today, I am privileged to represent the company and to honor you, Angie. My speech is a very personal one, but I am sure that I speak for the company and my colleagues in saying that we are honored to be guided by you every day. Well, while I know you personally, gusto din kita ipakilala syempre to everyone here on a more personal level as well. So in true Nuchi Asia fashion na masarap masaya, I made a short and simple video for and about you 
to show your different sides and how you impact us, ev uh, impact us every day. I hope this will not be the end of my legacy. <laughs> yeah. Again, congratulations, Angie, and um, please play the video. to all. Before anything else, I would like to express my deep gratitude to Man Smith and Fielders and of course my nominator, ang aking mini-me, <laughs> kaloka-like, Gretchen King, no? herself a Young Market Masters awardee, a rock star marketer, and a king entrepreneur. Nagahari talaga, Gretchen. And what a generous and kind introduction, Gretchen. Thank you so much. You know, of all the recognitions I've ever received, it is the appreciation of someone who believes I have made an impact in his or her life that I cherish the most. So, Gretchen, thank you so much for this honor. It means a lot to me. And what a privilege it is to be here today alongside my fellow awardees. Congratulations, Mars, Aaron, Isa Cabrera, and Ana Delgado, who have all made a positive difference in the lives of the people they have mentored. I'm sure Mars, Isa, and Ana will agree. A lot, have gone, a lot of people have gone farther than they thought they could because someone else believed in them. All, all of us, all four of us at some point in our lives have encountered bosses, colleagues, teachers, coaches, friends, and family who saw potential in us, perhaps something we did not see ourselves. And when they pointed out this potential to us, we suddenly saw ourselves in their eyes, and we finally understood and found our reason for being, our purpose. Two months ago, I lost my husband of 25 years, my best friend of 34 years. I was devastated, and I still am, to be honest. For a while, I even considered excusing myself from attending today's event, as it is simply too hard to find the energy to do anything when my heart is weighed down with sorrow and pain. Then I remembered my husband, John, and boy, was he proud of this MMMA award. Parang siya yung nanalo. In fact, he bought all the newspapers that published my photo and announcement of this award. And my two children witnessed this enthusiastic pride and understood the significance of this award to their parents. And this, my children, my love for family, served as my purpose. The reason to pick myself up, rejoin life, and push myself to move forward. As you surely know, and as Mars had explained earlier, parenthood comes with the natural role of a mentor. And I cannot allow my children, who have a full life ahead of them, to think that succumbing to despair is an option. I need to show my children, by example, that we overcome adversity with strength that comes from a heartfelt sense of purpose that is rooted in our values, providing us something to live for or to work for. 
Speaking of adversities, as a mentor, one of the most challenging, but also the best way to pro impart professional and personal lessons to a mentee is during a crisis. I am sure we all have our share of professional crisis stories in the course of our respective careers, and tucked under our belts are the valuable lessons we learned from them. One major professional crisis my team and I faced was in mid-2018 when an illegal strike was staged outside our factory by workers of our service providers who misrepresented themselves. This incident became a source of multiple crises, legal, product supply, and marketing. I will focus on the marketing lessons because that's our speech assignment from Josiah but also because I think it is timely for me to share as many brands today fall, quote-unquote, victim or are vulnerable to cancel culture. Cancel culture, in my view, has its, pros, has its pros and cons, but that's for another forum. So, during the crisis, it felt to us like we, NutriAsia, was all over social media. Siguro kasi hinahanap din namin yung news about us. No? Knowing now that the labor strike was politically motivated and we were an unfortunate black ops victim, explains how polished, how coordinated, and how well-funded the negative and misleading social media posts were on labor matters and how companies like NutriAsia were vilified as cruel capitalists. Boycotts were being called, lies recklessly thrown, and even directed at our shareholders. And you know, when false allegations are hurled against you, the attack feels very personal. And the knee-jerk reaction is to fight back, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Talagang parang lintik lang, walang gante. We wanted to correct the falsehoods one by one with hard facts and to shout this out to the world. It seemed like the logical thing to do. But we resisted the temptation to do so. Why? First of all, the illegal strikers played the underdog, taking first dibs at the hearts of those sympathetic to their cause. Hardened hearts, strung together, will not soften. We recognize that it would be a losing battle to talk to deaf ears. Hence, we never focused our communications on extremists who trolled NutriAsia. We knew we could never change their minds about us. Second, and the real reason here, is staying faithful to one's purpose. In guiding our decisions and actions, we reflected on the long-standing purpose of NutriAsia, which is to deliver masarap, masaya to our consumers, the everyday Pinoy family. And fighting back with animosity is not what NutriAsia is all about. It was clear to us, though, that communication was key to successfully navigate through the crisis. But we also knew that we had to do this with care. In mapping out our communication strategy, we were guided by the following questions. To whom do we communicate? The answer is, to the people whose opinion really matters to us. Several sectors had opinions about the incident. Labor groups, urban poor sympathizers, student activists, opportunistic politicians who wanted free publicity, and I must add, some not-so-unbiased journalists. But virtually none coming from our consumers. No voluntary comments from them on our various social media handles. And even when we sought them out for further climate check, it's either they were unaware, couldn't care less, or doubted the motives of the strikers. Buti na lang matatalino mga consumers. It reminded me of what Adam Grant wrote about distilling and discerning truth amidst New Age media. He said that the loudest voices rarely represent the majority. They're usually speaking for the extremes. 
So to us, it was very important that we get the pulse of the people who matter. Our consumers, the everyday Pinoy, mostly mothers across SEC, through social media monitoring and listening. We learned to our relief that the ongoing noise of the crisis was not bothering them. In fact, they were more concerned about the availability of our products in store. So we decided to amplify only messages deemed important and relevant to consumers who are loyal to our brands. The second question is, what do we communicate? While it was difficult to shake away the gigil to address the false allegations thrown at us, we knew we had the full strength of the law on our side since we were fully compliant and understood this to be a case of the less said, the better. We learned to focus on the positive and the good that the company and its brand stand for, which are the same reasons why our consumers have been loyal to us in the first place. We talked about the role of Dutri Asia in bringing Masarap Masaya to Filipinos as a partner in nation building, cultural propagation, and environmental sustainability. In choosing to go high instead of getting dragged down where the mud slinging was, we protected the business as well as the safety and livelihood of our employees and some 25,000 more in both upstream and downstream industries whom we indirectly help as business partner. And the last question was, how do we communicate this? Well, we maximized the power of brand love and affinity and allowed ourselves to be amazed by how loyal consumers and employees helped spread our truth. The crisis taught us to be grounded and sensitive with our communication. We recognized the need to talk about insights with a relevant and differentiated tone across generations to connect with them. We learned how to talk with the generation of the woke and the generation of the jaded, which messages resonate with them and which fly over their head. We also regularly communicated with our employees who defended us and became our ambassadors to the outside world through word of mouth. We worked with our employees to use this crisis to do even better, to operate as a team in addressing the resulting supply crisis, to come up with ways to serve our customers and consumers better, and to learn from all these to make NutriAsia even stronger. Today, NutriAsia's trust ratings are at its highest. Kantar's brand footprint continues to recognize our pillar brands, Silver Swan and Datu Puti, as two of the most chosen, fast-moving consumer goods brands in the country. NutriAsia has also been named one of the Philippines' best employers, according to the Statista and the Philippine Daily Inquirer's list of best employers for 2023. Throughout the crisis, and even to this day, I always remind my mentees to be clear on their non-negotiables, and I am referring to the principles and values they uphold. I tell them these principles and values will guide them along the journey. As they go up the ladder of success, when they make decisions, when they are at crossroads, when they are at their most trying times, preserving the integrity of their purpose will allow them to be the best and truest version of themselves. A good mentor-mentee relationship often results in a lasting friendship. My mentees have become my friends, and one of my greatest sources of joy is when I see them blossom and become happily successful in their chosen fields. This brings to mind a person very dear to me, whom I have mentored for many years when I was chief marketing officer of another company. I was grooming him to be the next CMO, but as fate would have it, another company made him an offer too difficult to refuse. So with a heavy heart, I had to let go. One week into his new role, he called to say he wanted to come back. His position in our company was still vacant, and if only for my own convenience and the career plan I have in mind for him, I definitely would have wanted him back. But as his mentor, 
a big part of my responsibility is actually to honor my mentee's dreams. And I knew his new role was more aligned with the aspirations he had for his family and career. The guidance he needed most from me was the unwavering support that he could do this and pushing him a step closer towards his ultimate goal and not mine. Now, more than a decade later, he has done so well in his job, has been given more and more businesses to lead, and is living the life he has dreamed of. And that really is what mentorship is all about, believing in each other. We all have dreams and aspirations for family and career that drive us forward in life. But the journey towards achieving those goals is never easy. The road to victory can be long and winding, full of unexpected twists and turns. It can be easy to feel discouraged or overwhelmed when faced with challenges that seem insurmountable. But when we have someone who believes in us, who sees our potential and our strengths, that road becomes a little less daunting. When we have someone in our corner cheering us on, it can make all the difference. Having someone believe in us is more than just a boost to our morale. It's a validation of our dreams and aspirations. You know, mentorship is often seen as a one-on-one -on -one relationship. But at its core, it's about the power of community. It's about creating a network of support and encouragement that helps us stay focused on our goals and reminds us that we're not alone in our journey. So whether you're a mentor, friend, or family, no label is needed. We can all play a role in supporting one another in the pursuit of our dreams and purpose. Let's be a community that uplifts and empowers one another, setting each on the road to the sweet victory of dreams realized, of purpose fulfilled. I dedicate this precious award to my own support community, my husband in heaven, my kids and family, my bosses and colleagues, my friends and mentees, and of course, my mentors, notably Barbara Young, who has patiently and tirelessly provided guidance from my very first role as brand assistant to my present roles as head of company and mother of newly minted adults. I want to thank you all once again for this incredible honor. Gretchen, thank you, thank you. And I wish everyone the best in your marketing endeavors. Let's continue to inspire each other and make a positive impact in the ever dynamic and exciting world of marketing. Josiah and Chiki, thank you for leading the way. Thank you.